Hello everybody and welcome to my 1 to 99 ranged guide. Now ranged is by far one of the most useful skills in the entire game and whether you like it or not it will probably be one of your very first 99s. Now today I'm going to be showing you three different routes to get 99 ranged. One of them is going to be very balanced, cost effective, and what I would recommend to the majority of people. I will also be showing you the absolute quickest way to get 99 ranged as well as a third option that will be very AFK and relaxed. Now why exactly do you want to get 99 ranged in OSRS? Well the first and most important reason is that it is extremely useful for a variety of PVM content including bossing, raids, slayer, and more. Leveling up your ranged level will actually increase your max hit, your accuracy, and just your overall DPS. So it is incredibly helpful to get a high range level and it will unlock a ton of bosses, a ton of quests, a ton of content, and you just really want to level up your ranged. Now the highest level quest requirement for ranged is fairly low, which is level 60 ranged. However, for the majority of players, you may actually need a higher range level just to be able to kill the bosses, even though it isn't a requirement. The highest diary requirement is actually only 70 ranged, so there aren't actually many high strict requirements for ranged, but a bunch of recommended ones. Now ranged has quite a few different quests that I would recommend doing. They either unlock really strong ranged equipment, or they provide you with a ton of ranged experience, which is also very useful. By far one of the most important quests to get done early is Animal Magnetism. Animal Magnetism will provide you with the Ava's devices, which not only provide you with one of the best quality of life features and cost saving features of any of the ranged equipment, it also has one of the best range bonuses to go in your cave slot, so you're normally always going to be wearing this. After that, another really important quest to get done early is the Dwarf Cannon quest, which will simply unlock the Dwarf Cannon. Now just to be honest, the Dwarf Cannon is 100% busted, it's so overpowered, and you definitely want to unlock it as soon as possible. Now after that, I would recommend completing Dragon Slayer 1, although not as important, it does unlock the green dehyde body, and eventually you'll probably want to finish Dragon Slayer 2. And the final quest that I would recommend working towards, while it doesn't really provide you with any ranged equipment or anything, it does unlock one of the best training spots in the entire game. To unlock the best spot, you need to have started Monkey Madness 2, which is highly recommended. Now the range skill is often viewed as being expensive, but honestly there are some pretty cost effective ways to train it, even all the way to 99. So I'm going to start off by showing you a very cost effective way to get to 99 ranged. It's not going to be the quickest, but also it will not break the bank. Now starting right from level 1, what is often recommended is to complete some quests. The range skill is particularly slow to begin with, so jumping through the early levels just by getting a few quests done is highly recommended. Not to mention that some of these early game quests do unlock things that are actually kind of useful for ranged. Now if you want to immediately jump from levels 1 to 32, you can complete the following quests. First appear the Horror from the Deep quest, which not only gives a bunch of ranged experience, it also unlocks the Book of Law, which is a really good ranged offhand item. You would also want to complete Death to the Dorgashin and Shadow of the Storm, which like I said will jump you all the way to 32 ranged, which is the recommended start regardless of the route you end up going with. Now if you don't want to do that or are not able to do that, starting from levels 1 to 30, you just need to do regular range training, and I'd recommend doing it with darts. Now starting right from level 1, you can start using your very first dart, that being the iron dart. From there you can move up to steel and then eventually mithril. Now darts are an insanely cost effective way to train range because so many players make darts to train fletching, which means they are incredibly cheap, especially right now. Mithril darts are only 6 GP each, which is almost nothing. The cost per hour to use Mithril darts right now is only around 5,000 GP, assuming you have an accumulator. Now, similar to any other combat skill, Ranged has different combat styles that you can choose. The combat styles you can generally choose are Accurate, Rapid, or Long Ranged. Now for pretty much 95% of all scenarios, you're just going to want to be on Rapid. It gives you the highest DPS, the highest XP per hour, and unless you have a very niche reason as to why you're not using Rapid, just be on Rapid. It's just better. Now starting at level 1, I would highly recommend training at Sand Crabs. Sand Crabs are an extremely AFK and easy monster to train at, and it's pretty much as good as anything else at that level, while also being incredibly AFK. Keep in mind though, if you have under 30 defense, you may have to actually bring some food, otherwise the crabs will eventually kill you. At level 1, there isn't a lot of variety in the ranged equipment that you can wear, but I'd highly recommend picking up an Amulet of Glory, a Combat Bracelet, and a full set of Leather Armor, all of this should not cost you more than 50,000 GP. 
Now, once you head on over to the sand crabs, you want to find a clump of at least two. From levels one to 30, you will be fine with just two crabs. But once you get into the higher levels, you want to find a clump of three. Otherwise, you'll have some downtime. So to begin with, range training will be incredibly slow, but it will get drastically quicker by the time you get to level 20. 1 to 30 will take you somewhere between 1 and 2 hours. It shouldn't cost you more than 30,000 GP in ammunition, so it's really not too bad. Now starting at level 30, there's a few things you want to change. Now first up here, I would switch over your armor to snakeskin armor. It's incredibly cheap, only costing around a couple thousand GP for the entire set. At this point, you also want to make sure you are using mithril darts because they are incredibly cost effective. Now one other gear upgrade I'd highly recommend getting at level 30 is the Ava's Attractor. You need to complete the Animal Magnetism quest, which I mentioned at the beginning, and it'll be a really good way to save some money on your darts because they will pick them off the ground for you. Without the Ava's Accumulator, you're going to burn through around 3,000 darts per hour, but with it, you only go through around 800 or 900, so it is a significant difference. Also, you definitely want to make sure you are using ranging pots. Ranging pots are really cheap now as well, only costing around 300 GP, and will have a greater impact on your DPS and XP per hour than most of your ranged armor upgrades, so always make sure you are using them. Now from levels 40 to 50, the only major gear upgrade I would recommend is jumping up to green dehyde. If you haven't done Dragon Slayer 1, it's not that big a deal. You won't be able to wear the green dehyde body, although you'll be able to wear the rest. In the end, it won't really make that big of a difference, so don't worry about it. At this point, your XP per hour will be somewhere around 25,000 to 30,000 experience per hour, which means getting from level 40 to 50 will only take you around 2 or 3 hours, and will only cost you around 25,000 GP. Now from levels 50 to 60, you want to bump up to the blue dehyde set, as well as the Ava's Accumulator. These are extremely cheap upgrades and you definitely want to go ahead and do them. At this level, you should be getting around 35,000 experience per hour, which is pretty good for how cheap it is. Which means getting from level 50 to 60 will only take you around 5 hours and will only cost you around 50,000 GP. Now from level 60 to 70, you want to start using the red DI set. In combination with your range level increase, that should bump you up somewhere around 40,000 experience per hour which means from level 60 to 70 will take you around 12 hours and will cost you around 120,000 GP. Now starting at level 70, I would recommend actually going over to the Ammonite Crabs on Fossil Island. You really can go there whenever, just assuming you have a high enough defense level. However, there generally are less Ammonite Crabs and they are a lot busier, but at level 70 you may start DPSing 3 crabs down at once, so at that point the Ammonite Crabs are recommended. Now finally, from level 70 to 75, we have a couple different upgrades available, and it really comes down to how much money are you willing to spend. They are all pretty inexpensive in the grand scheme of things, but at level 70, first appear you definitely want to upgrade to Black Dehyde. Now additionally, at level 70, you can start wearing God Dehyde, which if you can, I'd recommend upgrading your Coif and your Boots. That'll be a fairly significant upgrade because currently we're only wearing Snakeskin. Now other additional upgrades you can consider are going for Barrow's Gloves, other options are a Book of Law which will help a little bit, and finally you could also upgrade your Black Dehyde Body and Chaps to the God Dehyde variant. Now from level 70 to 75 you're going to be getting around 45,000 experience per hour, which means those levels will take you around 11 hours, but will only cost you around 110k, which is not that bad. That means going from level 1 to 75, just killing crabs will only cost you around 350k in total, which is incredibly inexpensive, but will take you around 33 hours. Now darts really are an amazing and cost-effective training method, but one thing we have to keep in mind is, well, as of the recording of this video, there is a looming equipment rebalance that could be coming through for the blowpipe as well as darts. So there are definitely some other good options that you can use just to train on sand crabs or really anything else you feel like shooting for that matter. Starting at level 50, you can start using a magic short bow imbued with either rune arrows or if you want to be a real baller, amethyst arrows. This is a really good option for really anywhere in runescape and will get you actually a bit higher experience per hour through most of those levels, but it will cost more as well. Another good option is at level 61, you can start using a rune crossbow with broad bolts. This also has a Slayer level requirement of 55, and is just a good thing to unlock anyway if you ever plan on killing anything with a high defense level, but this will also give you a fairly comparable experience rate at Sand Crabs. Now starting at level 75, you unlock the Titan of Range Training, and that is the Toxic Blowpipe. Yes, we don't really know the future of the Blowpipe, but based on the information we have today, it is probably still going to be a powerhouse weapon. But pretty much from this point onwards, if for some reason you're looking at this in a year's time and the blowpipe is just terrible, uh, maybe try out the magic shortbow imbued. 
Now what I would recommend to the majority of players is starting at level 75 to start training Slayer if you haven't already started. Leveling your ranged passively while also training Slayer is a really good option, and if you plan on doing Slayer at any point anyway, this is just really the way to go. In most cases, you're going to get 99 ranged quite a bit before you get 99 Slayer, which means it is good to get started early. Now when you are training Slayer with range, there are two big cost factors that normally add up, and that is the cost to use the blowpipe, and the cost to use the Dwarf Multicannon. Now you don't necessarily have to use both of these, but they will speed up both your range training and your Slayer training, and realistically this is one of the best uses for your money if you do have it. If for any reason any of you guys have an armadillo chain screwed on, definitely just sell that and invest it into cannonballs, it's going to be a better use of your money. Now that you are on your way to 99 ranged, you have pretty much unlocked all of the ranged gear in the game, but I wouldn't recommend buying all of it. Now the gear setup I have on now is by far one of the most recommended ranged setups, pretty much all the way to 99 ranged. Everything after this is just very minor upgrades, and the equipment gets really expensive. Now if you don't already have it, I recommend getting a full set of God Dehyde. The coif, the body, the chaps, and the boots. It is highly recommended at this point to have Barrow's gloves, but if you don't, you can wear black dehyde, that's okay too. Now the archer's ring is generally around 3 or 4 mil, and when you imbue it with Nightmare Zone points, it becomes a very strong ring, so you should definitely buy it around level 75 if you can. And the final most impactful gear upgrade is a necklace of anguish. Right now, these things are fairly cheap at only 10.7 mil, and while it is not required to get on your way to 99 ranged, it is one of the most powerful upgrades in the game, and you should prioritize this if you do have the money. Now, the cost to use a cannon non-stop for an hour is around 500k per hour. That's assuming you throw about 3,000 cannonballs. Now, the cost to use a blowpipe per hour with mithril darts is around 300k, and with adamant darts it's about 340k or something like that. So altogether, cannoning and blowpiping your Slayer task will be about 800k per hour, which is quite expensive. However, we do have to keep in mind that you will be getting a lot of that back passively through Slayer drops. Not to mention that you're also training a very slow skill, that realistically, even if you don't do it now, you're probably going to train it mostly through ranged anyway. Now Slayer has quite a few really good cannonable and blowpipeable tasks, if that's a word. For example, stuff like Bloodvelds, Calphites, Dagonoths, Suquas, Greater Demons, uh, Trolls, Black Demons. I mean, you can get away with a lot because the Blowpipe is kind of overpowered, but those are some options. And not to mention that even if you are training melee, you also will often use a cannon anyway, which will get you passive, albeit kind of expensive, ranged experience on the side. Now, if you really don't have the money to start dumping a ton of money into both a cannon and Blowpipe, there are some areas that you can just camp, not necessarily on a Slayer task, that will usually allow you to break even or just lose maybe a minor amount of money on both the cannonballs and the blowpipe. Some really good options are Ice Trolls in the Fremenic region, uh, Elder Chaos Druids in the Wilderness, although that is obviously in the Wilderness, so that will also kind of suck. And another really good higher level one is actually killing Locust Riders. You can only kill these after completing the contact quest, but you can actually make money, usually cannoning them and blowpiping them, which is pretty rare. Now the general experience per hour you get from both the blowpipe and the cannon at the same time is usually somewhere between 100k and 150k, but once you get up to the higher levels I've gotten actually close to 200k per hour, assuming you're really paying attention. That means going from level 75 to 99 using purely the Slayer route will take you around 90 to 95 hours and has an upfront cost of 70 mil, assuming you're non-stop using blowpipe and cannon. Now we have to keep in mind that a lot of that you're going to get back, and the amount of money you get back here is really going to depend on what Slayer monsters you kill. So it's hard to give a definitive number here, but I'm going to do it, and I'm sure some people are going to tell me I'm wrong here, but let's just say you get half of your money back from Slayer drops. So even though this is actually kind of an expensive option for a balanced route, it is still recommended in my mind because it will get you into the lower 90s for Slayer, if not higher if you choose to use a bunch of different combat styles as you go for 99 Slayer. So in the end, going to 99 Slayer using the balanced route will take around 128 hours and will cost somewhere between 30 and 40 mil, although again that's going to vary a lot. But we can't forget we're going to be gaining a ton of Slayer experience which is kind of hard to put a price on that, but I think it is worth 30 or 40 mil. Okay, so I think it's about time we go over the second route now. Now the cheap, easy, and AFK route as I like to call it is pretty damn similar from levels 1 to 75, however from 75 to 99 instead of well training Slayer with a blowpipe and cannon, which granted is actually fairly costly, 
you can opt to just go train in Nightmare Zone. Nightmare Zone is incredibly AFK, uh, minorly profitable if you account for the herb boxes you can buy at the reward chest, and reasonably decent XP per hour. Now the weapon we're going to be using is the Magic Short Bow Imbued, and you do want to bring the best gear that you have, so an Anguish is recommended, an Archer Ring Imbued, an Assembler, and either full God Dehyde, or if you do have it, full Elite Void is actually a bit better, but God Dehyde will work just fine. Now to do this in the most AFK way possible, we're going to need a few different potions. We're going to need to buy Absorption Potions as well as Super Ranging Potions. Now I already have a bunch of Nightmare Zone points here, actually about 5 million. If you don't have any, you just need to complete a few Nightmare Zone games without the potions, and then you'll be able to afford them pretty quickly. For example, here we can go buy, well let's just do 200 Super Ranging Potions. After that, they'll be located here in the barrel. Now the final item you need here is a Rock Cake or a Locator Orb which will allow you to lower your hit points, which is something we'll need to do. So first of all, we're going to talk to Dominic Onion, and we're going to make a customizable normal rumble. After it's created, we're going to go over here to the potion, and we're going to put the following monsters on. We're going to go with Count Draenor, the Sand Snake, King Rauld, the Kendall, and me. These are monsters that are pretty weak, but have high hit points and can be killed with ranged. So after that, we accept the dream. We're going to run into the middle. Once you're in the middle, make sure you have auto retaliate on, locator orb down to one HP, drink a bunch of absorption potions, and finally here drink a super ranging potion. And that is all, you are pretty much set. Now for arrows, I'd recommend using either amethyst arrows or rune arrows. Amethyst will cost you around 70,000 GP per hour to use, and rune will only cost you 20,000 GP per hour. Rune arrows are incredibly cost effective right now. Now the amount of XP per hour here is going to vary a bit on the arrow you're using, your range level, and your overall gear, but once you get into the upper 90s, you can start getting around 70,000 experience per hour, which means going from level 75 to 99 will take around 180 hours. That means the total time to get 99 ranged with the AFK route is around 210 hours, but it will not really cost you any money. Actually, most likely you're going to profit a bit, so not bad. Now finally, I'm going to be going over the quickest way to get 99 ranged, and unlike other skills, getting 99 ranged with the quickest method is substantially quicker than pretty much anything else that is available. Now I am of course talking about chinning. Chinning Maniacal Monkeys in the Monkey Madness 2 tunnel offers one of the highest experience rates in the entire game. When you are close to 99 with Black Chinchampas, you can get over 1 million experience per hour in the ranged skill. Now that is absolutely crazy, and what makes it even better is it's actually never been cheaper to train with Chinchampas, so if you do have a bit of money, I would recommend doing it actually. Now to start chinning, you will actually need level 45 ranged, so the first 45 levels are going to be pretty similar to any of the other methods. The only difference is if you want to speed things up, you could use a Dwarf Multi Cannon right from level 1. With the cannon, you can get around 50,000 to 60,000 experience per hour, and that will jump you up to level 45 just in under an hour. So starting at level 45, you can start throwing regular Grey Chinchampas. At 55, you can start throwing the Red Chinchampa. And finally, at level 65, you can throw the Black Chinchampa. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the gear. Now you notice I am wearing Void, actually Elite Void. And this is highly recommended because the monkeys that you are killing have no defenses, and you're going to be killing a lot of them at once. So Void is extremely effective here. If you really don't want to get Void, you can get away with just Blessed Dehyde, but it is actually going to be substantially worse. Now another almost required piece of gear is the Necklace of Anguish. This actually boosts your DPS a substantial amount and your experience per hour by I think like 10 or 15%. If you can't afford the Anguish, I don't think you can afford Chinning, so I would just get it. Everything else is nice, but not as important. Now similar to when you are bursting in the Monkey Madness 2 tunnel, we are going to be prioritizing our prayer bonus because the actual increased in ranged accuracy doesn't actually do that much. That means an archer ring, pagation boots, an offhand, stuff like that doesn't actually make much of a difference, so you're actually much better off taking prayer boosting gear so you don't have to waste time recharging your prayer. So right now I am pretty much wearing the best in slot items. You want a ring of the gods imbued, devout boots, a Book of Law, an Assembler, and ideally a Rata's Blessing 4, but that's pretty minimal. Now for the inventory, we're mainly going to be bringing Divine Ranging Potions and Stamina Potions. Now the Staminas are kind of required because we're going to be running back and forth a lot. Now another item I'd highly recommend getting if you don't have it is the Bone Crusher. The Bone Crusher is amazing here, not only because you're going to get a lot of passive prayer experience, but also it actually can make this a lot more AFK. When you are chinning, you are outputting such a large DPS that if you throw the Bone Crusher Necklace on just for a minute, 
you'll pretty much recharge all of your prayer because you're killing so many monkeys in a very short period of time. You want a light source, so the Kandarin headgear is very good. If you haven't completed Monkey Madness 2, you also need to bring a Grigri. And also I'd bring a Teleport out. The Royal Seed Pot is good, but anything else will work. Also finally, an Emergency Prayer Potion. So we're going to be going to the exact same spot that we did in the Magic Guide. It is a bit different for everyone, but if you start following my route and hit a dead end, there's usually only one other option to go. And as I mentioned, you do need to have at least started Monkey Madness 2, and you will already have your route planned out, so just make sure that you remember it from when you did the quest. Now one other quick tip is to not bring your entire stack of Chinchampas at once. Now if you die here for whatever reason, you will lose all of your Chinchampas, regardless of whether they would protect over an item or not. They instantly flee, you can't get them back. Uh, so if you bring your entire stack of 30,000 black Chinchampas and you die, you are going to be very sad. So don't do that. I'd only bring a couple thousand at a time. Uh, so once you're here, you will have to probably hop worlds a couple times, but once you find an empty world, go down, protect from melee, and run into the bottom right corner. Now by far the best strategy for killing the Maniacal Monkeys is using a hit and run strategy. This will increase your XP per hour fairly substantially and I would recommend doing it because you are spending quite a bit of money on the chins. Now if you just want to AFK you can do that too but your experience rates will take a hit. So I personally do it in this little corner here. You need to find an alcove where you have kind of an X formation. This here is a spot I normally use. I just put some tile markers on the wall just so it's a little easier to click back and forth. You want to make sure you have auto retaliate on and then pretty much after every attack you just move. You will automatically attack after every movement and you'll get into a rhythm very quickly. This is the best way to do it because after every movement you're going to stack more monkeys on the exact same tile which means you're always going to be hitting the maximum amount of monkeys whenever you attack, which really does boost your XP per hour. Now while you are throwing Chinchampas, you always want to make sure you have a Divine Ranging Potion active, and a Stamina Potion just because you are running back and forth so much. Now additionally, you want to be praying Rigor, or if you don't have that, at the very least, Eagle Eye. Now because here you pretty much have access to Unlimited Prayer, you don't really need to worry about your prayer draining so quickly. And if you did bring Prayer Boosting Gear, it's just going to be a lot slower than normal. So there are two ways to restore your prayer here. If you don't have a Bone Crusher, you do need to just pick the prayer potions they drop off the ground. This will slow you down some and make it a lot less AFK. And that is why I would recommend the Bone Crusher. If you have the Bone Crusher, once you get down to around 20 prayer or something like that, just equip it and then you just need to wait about 40 or 50 seconds and all of your prayer will be restored. Now keep in mind the Bone Crusher is actually going to be buffed in the near future, which means there will be no delay between when you equip it and when you start restoring prayer points. Just in case it wasn't clear, you do restore a prayer point whenever you kill a monkey and because you are slaughtering them so quickly, you get a lot of prayer back. Now throwing great chinchampas are by far the quickest XP per hour at that level and you're going to get around 250k per hour although you can get higher, that's a bit on the lower end. Which means you're going to need around a thousand chinchampas to get to 55 ranged, it will only take you around 30 or 40 minutes and will cost you around 800k. Now starting at 55, you can start throwing the red chinchampas. Now you can pretty much throw these all the way to 99 if you want. Or if you truly want to go with the most expensive route, you can switch over to black chinchampas at 65. Now because gray chinchampas aren't nearly as popular, they're actually really not cost effective. So I would never throw a regular gray chinchampa past level 55. If you want to do this in the most cost effective way possible, just throw red chinchampas all the way to 99. Now the XP per hour is going to increase substantially as you bump up through the range levels, which means giving an accurate XP per hour is a bit hard. The XP per hour from Red Chinchampas is going to scale up from around 400k per hour at the lower levels all the way up to around 750k to 800k per hour at the high end. But even if you average around 600k per hour throwing Red Chinchampas, that means it'll take you around 20 to 25 hours to get to 99 and will cost you around 50 to 55 mil. Now the amount of chinchampas you need is going to be somewhere between 40,000 and 45,000, which at today's prices really isn't actually that bad. 50 to 55 mil for 99 range using one of the quickest methods is actually insane value. And the only reason this isn't really just the recommended route is because Training Slayer is just so strong. I wouldn't really say this route is limited to just ultra wealthy people. Now if you do want to go with the most expensive route possible, at 65 you're going to switch over to Black Chinchampas. At level 65 you're going to start at around 500k per hour, but as you get into the higher levels, you can get up to or over 1 mil per hour experience, which is kind of insane. This means going from level 65 to 99 will only take you around 17 hours, or somewhere between 15 and 20, will cost you around 75 to 85 mil, and will require you to throw around 30,000 to 35,000 Chinchampas. Now one other thing you can consider while you are training with Chinchampas is that you can actually throw Chinchampas on defensive mode 
and gain defense experience. This will actually be one of the quickest combat training methods in the game for defense. And while it will slow down your ranged training, I did this to 99 ranged and ended up bumping up my defense level by about 20 levels. The XP per hour for defense is kind of insane. You can get up to around 300k per hour. So in the end, how do these methods compare? Well, there's a pretty big variance in the amount of time and of course the cost. The cheapest option is extremely AFK. It's going to take you over 200 hours, around 210, uh, but won't cost you any money. Actually, probably you're going to make a bit of money. Now, the middle route will take you around 128 hours, will cost around 35 mil, although that's a little hard to ballpark, but will get you a ton of Slayer experience, so it's highly recommended. Again, most people are going to train Slayer eventually anyway, so the balance route is usually pretty effective. Or finally, optionally, you can go with the absolute quick as a way to get 99 ranged, and it's really quick. You can get 99 range done in around 20 hours for currently a cost of around 80 mil if you go with Black Chinchampas. So a lot of different options here. Obviously, you can split the difference always somewhere in between, but those are my favorite routes. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for my ranged guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what skill guide you'd like to see next, and maybe we'll get around to making it. Now before I go here, I'm going to go give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thanks to Timothy Chen, Cappy, Guy Fox, Valhalla Lad, Brian Robinson, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all subscribing at the Dragon Tier membership. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Also thanks to All Things Gaming, Birdbot, Base Titch, and Red Kamikaze for subscribing at the Runite Tier. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in my videos, get access to a video release schedule, as well as get a custom role in my Discord server. Anyway guys, thanks again and I'll see you next time.